What's going on? Raven Ritual 666 back from the dead with another Diablo 4 build guide. Today, I am super excited to bring to you my Season 6 PTR Chain Lightning build with no bugged interactions. This build is going to be very viable for the end game push coming into the Vessel of Hatred. So I wanted to create a build using no bugged interactions and a build that's going to be viable coming into the next season that I don't think is going to get nerfed. So this build is not using the Helm of Perdition, which is currently bugged in the PTR. It's not using Azeroth and it's not using Frostburn. The reason being, Helm of Perdition, 200% damage to Angels and Demons. That's probably still going to be viable, but the 60% multiplicative buff from a Lilith's Grace um, will probably not work the same way it is in the PTR. Uh, at the moment, we've got a huge stat squish going into Season 6. The Frostburns and the Azeroth have not got that. It might be intended. We don't know. We're not sure. But right now, their lucky hit procs to do damage is absolutely insane. So I wanted to create a build that's going to be able to push the end game that I hope a lot of you will be able to use. So this is the Andariel's version of Chain Lightning. Yes! It is nothing new, but it is very, very good for Season 6. So, in Season 5, this version runs Starlight Aspect. Now, the Starlight Aspect has got quite a big nerf going into next season. The reason being is, it gives you mana back every time you heal. And when you're at max life and you are using Andariels, you're getting a lot of life on here, and that is just keeping infinite mana. It has been changed. So, for Season 6, you only get mana back for every 200% of life that you overheal. Now, that's still okay with Chain Lightning, because you can see here on screen just how much Chain Lightning is still bouncing, probably enemies. Uh, we've still got uh, a ton of mana up all the time. This does use uh, Ring of Starless Skies. However, the only piece of gear that is absolutely important for this build is the Andariel's Visage with uh, the Starlight Aspect. However, I do have two different builds. With the Andariel's Starlight, I've been able to push a pit 80 to 86 as we see here. Um, I have got a separate build where we're running uh, the Fist of Fate as well as Lucky Hit Chance to Restore Primary Resource where I've been able to push a pit 90 without any bugged interactions. So, um, watch this space, you'll be able to see the planner down below if you want to check out both builds but before I get into the skills I do want to talk about some of the benefits of this build one you are super tanky with Andariels you are just constantly regening health and you can sit there and actually tank mobs you can cop a fireball to the face you don't have to worry too much about you know the damage from the mob or who's going to hit you because you have a lot of life you have a lot of damage reduction and more importantly the passive health regen is just super nice to play with um, especially if you're a casual this build is going to be very good for helping you to push those pits as long as you can get that andariel visage uh, the other benefits of this build is that you are constantly in barrier ice armor is almost on perma cooldown as you can see here and when you are running stormswell stormswell has been buffed which is kind of crazy because Stormswell has already been so good, you still get the multiplicative damage uh, to enemies or vulnerable enemies, but you get a 15% bonus more when you're in Ice Armor. So it's very nice to have that. So the Paragon board has been completely changed going into this uh, new season. Um, and the master working has been kind of expensive. Now, this build that I've been able to push up to tier 90, which is 180, by the way. 180 live servers, which is crazy, is not even been optimized. I have not got per perfect master working. I do not have perfect GA gear. Some of my gear is not even ancestral. And I haven't really played around with a Paragon board to perfectly min-max it. That's why I just want to bring this build that, hey, this is not using any bugged interactions. This is not using any gear that I think is going to be, be nerfed. And this is just going to be a very solid build to push you to Torment 4 and beyond, uh, as you can see here, this playstyle. I mean, look at that damage! We are just doing millions of damage. Uh, we have so much mana. 
Uh, it just feels good to play. And I think the positive of running this without the extra conjurations for the damage is you can prevent yourself being crowd controlled. You've got flame shield as an old oh dang button. You've got teleport, one, for movement speed, but also for a ooh, old dang button when I need unstoppable. Let's have a little bit of a look at our gear. So, quick snapshot of our gear there. Uh, that's a bit of an overflow of what I was running there with, like, no perfect masterworks. Uh, we're going to run into the boss, and you're going to see straight away a bit about the playstyle. Uh, you are just going to pop your ultimate. You are going to just go uh, constant uh, ice armor. Uh, we're just going to obviously spam chain lining. And look at that. We are just smoking the slither straight away. Uh, the good thing about flame shield and teleport when you're on the bosses, we still have the debuff, the same as the previous season. But the difference is the bosses are not complete bullet sponges like before. As you can see, we are doing a lot of nice damage. We are going to have to avoid uh, getting the debuffs on us. Uh, that is still very important. But as you can see here, we're just going to dodge, dance, uh, attack when we can. And it is very easy with our movement speed, with our teleport, and with flame shield to avoid taking the debuff to really help you push those pit bosses with ease. Alright, let's have a look at our skills and then we'll break down the gear and Paragon board briefly. So, looking at the gear, firstly we're running Andara's Visage. If you couldn't tell already, um, you probably can't see right now, but ideally if you could have perfect masterworking, which I did not have, you want triple attack speed. If not, double attack speed and all stats will be the best way to masterwork it. You want to run Topaz in your helm. Um, because the intelligence buff is just a flat damage boost to everything you do, which is wonderful to have. We are going to run Tyrials. You could potentially run Raiment. Raiment would be more damage, but you are going to have a worse time from survivability. Tyrials just feels better and much easier to play, particularly if you're a casual. Um, yeah, triple masterwork to DR. I think I got like one or two on, on my current build, uh... And GADR if you are wanting to be fancy. But speaking of the runes, uh, the new rune system is kind of cool. I'm going to have another video out very soon. So please subscribe to my channel. It is free. Comes with a money back guarantee. If you want to look at some of the underperforming runes and why you shouldn't use them while leveling. But for the end game, uh, you do want to run your active runes. Uh, standing still for 0.3 seconds gives you the offering. The offering works by every time you stand still, you get 25 offering. And then once you have 500 offering, you're going to evoke the Druids Petrify. There are three rune words at the moment that are just so overpowerful. It's one, the evoke Druids Petrify, because when you stun enemies, you increase your crit damage against them by quite a bit. Um, I think it's about 20%. Multiplicative crit damage, which is huge. The other one that is amazing to run right now is the Barbarians Enhanced Warcry. Everybody knows that plays, and if you're new here, Warcry is phenomenal. Uh, it creates a buff, you get movement speed, and you get a multiplicative damage boost too. So, for the other way it works, you need to have one Ritual Rune, and you need to have one Invocation Rune. So the Ritual Rune means, hey, every time I stand still for 0.3 seconds, I get Offering, and after... You know, a few seconds, I'm going to get 500 offering, and then Petrify is going to cast. I feel like that's the best when you stand still, because Petrify hits close enemies, stuns them, you get a nice multiplicative damage boost um, because of our skills. And Tam is super nice, because we're constantly casting non-channel core skills, especially with Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning is just firing at a very fast attack speed. We get a ton of offering, and Warcry is almost up permanently. Which is wonderful to have. For the gloves. Um, if you don't have a very good Fist of Fate. Um, I, I've got two different setups here. Well, I've got the Starlight variant. And I have our Fist of Fate variant. The Fist of Fate variant is what I've been able to use to do a Pit 90. Um, but otherwise, I think that first setup you should run is the Starlight variant. So gloves. You want ranks to chain lightning, extra damage. You can 
Temper the crit damage and chance to freeze. Chance to freeze is very nice because with our skills, uh, we can get ranks to Horfrost, which gives us multiplicative damage to children frozen enemies, which is wonderful to have. Uh, axials are super important. Uh, you want to masterwork ranks to chain lightning. This build that you've seen for the pit 80, 86, and 90, not perfect gear. So uh, we're only scratching the surface. Um, but that's what makes Chain Lightning absolutely powerful for Season 5 and going into Season 6. The boots, for some reason, D4 builds does not have Aspect of the Orange Herald. Aspect of the Orange Herald reduces uh, the cooldown of your ultimate, which means you can be permanently in unstable currents, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, unstable currents means we're getting free Lightning Spears. We're getting free ball lightnings, we're getting free charge bolts, we're getting extra damage, but more importantly, the lightning spears are giving us multiplicative damage thanks to the Conjuration Mastery. Conjuration Mastery has been capped to 30 this season, um, which is still maybe way too overtuned, because um, you can see the damage lightning spear and chain lightning can still do with tons of conjurations. Um, but the, yeah, the Tempest we're running is the Warcry for the rune, sorry. Uh, looking at a weapon, I run splintering. Yes, I know it's a chain lightning build, but I do run splintering, and I know it's not a two-handed weapon. It's not getting the damage out of splintering that you would from a two-handed staff, but it's very nice for AoE clear. For single target, like if I'm farming torment bosses, I will swap out a sword for a sword that I've got lightning rod on because the big damage hits from chain lightning is so much better on a single target and for single target i'll take off tyrials if i'm farming torment bosses i'll take off tyrials and i'll put on raiment and i'll put on lightning rod for pit runs um for infernal hordes i will run tyrials might and splintering because aoe clears better and i've got way more survivability tyrials my damage right now is kind of eh. so raiment is definitely better in that kind of aspect but I've changed my amulet. Before, I was running Conjuration Master and Devouring Blaze or Glass Cannon and Devouring Blaze. I've taken off the Dev Blaze and gone Conjuration Mastery and Glass Cannon. If I was running a Raiment, I would be a little concerned about having Glass Cannon as well. I'd rather go Conjuration Mastery and Devouring Blaze because then I've got a bit more survivability. Too many ranks to Glass Cannon, you will die. But your damage is insane it's up all the time you don't have to rely on your conjurations starlight is best in slot um as you can see if we swap to the fist of fate variant we take off shredding blades from our gloves we put that on our offhand and we move storm swell up here because storm swell is amazing now that you get a bonus 15 percent um while you have ice armor active which is unbelievable because we're in permanent ice armor and the amount is increased against frozen enemies, which is super cool. So, Stormswell is best in slot on the amulet. As long as you're running um, when you're attacking enemies with ice armor, you reduce its cooldown as the passive. Ring of Starless, best in slot. We want crit chance. We want to get as much crit chance as possible. If you don't have a Ring of Starless, guys, you can still run this build. It's okay. Uh, you are going to struggle with your mana regen a little bit for the Fist of Fate version. If you don't have a Ring of Starless, it probably won't be viable. But if you don't have it, you can actually temper crit damage and probably unstable currents cooldown again. Why not? Or a resource gen aspect or lucky hit to uh, re increase your resource would be super nice to run. And just put on recharging aspect. Recharging aspect, every time Chain Lightning bounces, you're going to regen. Uh, and so that would be kind of nice. But you get the multiplicative damage still from Ring of Stars. So it's still best in slot. Tower Rashes. Uh, a Sork without Tower Rashes is a sad Sork. You do want the damage uh, for casting multiple elements. Um, but Tower Rashes is still very, very nice. For your offhand, you want Intelligence. Crit Chance. Um, uh, whoops. Uh, I have chance to restore primary resource here. I don't actually have that. Oh, sorry. That's the Fist of Fate version. You need that for the Fist of Fate version. For the Starlight version, uh, instead, you just want max life if you want the survivability or cooldown reduction if you are struggling a little bit. Either or are going to be best in slot. For 
both weapons you want crit damage and chance for chain lightning to hit or cast twice same as with the gloves if you're not running the fist of fate you want lucky hit chance to freeze and crit damage boots as well uh you want either evade cooldown reduction or teleport cooldown reduction is great to have but you do want lucky hit chance to freeze if you're gonna brick an item and you can't get lucky hit chance to freeze as long as you've got it on either your gloves or your boots you're gonna be okay you're gonna get the damage from hoarfrost if not get lucky hit chance to stun the others are no good you don't want immobilize you don't want slow but lucky hit chance to stun or to freeze will give you a 20 percent multiplicative damage when they are affected by those for our skills chain lightning of course flame shield it's super nice to be able to break any crowd control and just be immortal uh with the pit bosses if you're gonna get hit by one you just keep your old dang button try not to swear uh, to hit the flame shield and you can just you know tank one of those pit bosses so you don't get the debuff uh we do cast lightning spear as much as we can we get two of them two ranks to conjuration mastery a lot of multiplicative damage uh, unstable currents which is permanent which gives us extra ranks to lightning spear which really we can get up to like 10 ranks at least of conjuration mastery which is a huge damage boost ice armor all the time uh it's very nice to have with our storm swirl aspect and then teleport one for movement speed one more speed running but also for the unstoppable and dr for our aspects or enchantment sorry uh firebolt because we're getting a ton of dr to burning enemies a ton of damage to burning enemies and i do think ice blades is best here right we don't have any cold damage it's very nice to get cold damage it's a little bit of cooldown reduction which we kind of need because we're not running shaker or we don't have cdr on our amulet we don't really have cooldown reduction here on our offhand you can if you want to and to reach armor cap honestly i, I like total armor I wasn't sure about it. I wasn't sure if I wanted a cooldown reduction, but total armor feels amazing. Uh, with a couple of points in Paragon, we can be at a thousand armor cap, and we can be an absolute tank as a sort, which means it's a much easier build to play than those crazy cracked bugged interaction builds. Uh, especially if you just want to kind of, you know, hold on a bun, rotate your defensive skills, and just have a, a calm and easy time playing with your friends. Okay. In the interest of time, I was going to go through the whole skill tree, the Paragon board. However, I have the link to the build guide in the description below. While you're down there, please hit the subscribe button. It is completely free. Again, it comes with a money back guarantee. It really helps support me. We are so close to pushing for the YouTube partner. Uh, it would really help a lot. I'm live on Twitch on Thursdays and Saturdays. You can see me in the Discord if you have any questions below. But also, for the Vessel of Hatred, please let me know. What are you going to do? Are you going to be doing the campaign first? Or are you going to be blasting to the end game to check out the new Dark Citadel, the new content? Let me know. I'm very interested in also what you'd like me to do. Do you want to see me blast Salk to the end game and come up with some crazy ass cracked builds? Or are you just going to prefer to watch me play the campaign and have some fun for the new DLC. I look forward to seeing you all next time. Raven Ritual 666, back from the dead. See you on the next one.